Hi everyone. Today I have with me problem 3.37 from Young and Friedman's University Physics textbook. Um, this problem is not my own, but the solution is. I just want to make that clear for copyright purposes. So um, yeah, let's get started. So according to the textbook, this problem is titled bird migration. So Canada geese. Okay, that doesn't sound right. I'm used to saying Canadian geese. So I'm going to say Canadian geese. Canadian geese migrate along sorry Canadian I'm so sorry like I'm so bad at reading things um out loud sorry it's a weakness of mine anyways Canada geese migrate essentially along a north-south direction for well over a thousand kilometers in some cases traveling at speeds up to 100 kilometers per hour if one goose is flying at 100 kilometers per hour relative to the air but a 40 kilometer per hour wind is blowing from west to east at what angle relative to the north south direction should this bird head to travel directly southward relative to the ground b how long will it take the goose to cover a ground distance of 500 kilometers from north to south Note, even on cloudy nights, many birds can navigate by using the Earth's magnetic field to fix the north-south direction. Um, that last part is interesting, but it doesn't really um, pertain directly to our problem. So I guess just it's a nice fun fact to know. Um, but okay, so let's get started on our actual solution. So as per usual, you know that I really like to start, with, start off with a diagram. And of course, because this is a relative motion problem, we want to um, draw a diagram that is in a bird's eye view, um, no pun intended, but yeah, in a bird's eye view. And we also want to establish some sort of coordinate system, right? So we're given a lot of directions, north, south, um, east, west. Now we want to draw that out on our paper and establish what's positive, what's negative, right? So let's do that. So. I hate that. I hate that line. Okay. There we go. Okay. That's so thick. One second. Let me try again. It's bothering me. Perfect. Okay. That's better. Not my favorite, but better. Okay. So this is north. This is east. This is south. And this is west. So we, I'm also going to draw a smaller, like, um, like, I forget what this is called, but I'm going to establish what's positive and what's negative. So basically this sign means that north and east are positive and then, you know, consequentially west and south are negative, right? Because they're just the opposite of north and east. All right. So now okay, instead of actually going ahead and drawing out all of this, I feel like there's a lot of information thrown at us in this problem. So instead of just going directly and drawing our bird's eye view diagram, we want to we want to go ahead and write down our known so that we can like be better informed on how to draw our diagrams because this problem is a little bit confusing just because of the wording. Okay, so we know that this one goose is flying at 100 kilometers per hour relative to the air. Okay, and on top of that, there is a 40 kilometer per hour wind that's blowing from west to east. We're looking for the angle, and ultimately, we want to travel directly southward to the ground, or the bird wants to. Okay, so let's let's write down our knowns. So going to pull up my favorite color, pink. Okay, so the speed of the goose relative to the air, right? That's going to be 100 kilometers per hour. Okay, then we know that there's 40 kilometers per hour wind blowing from west to east. And really, what is wind? It's the speed of the air relative to the ground. But I don't want to use two Gs, right? Because um, we're going to get confused. So, in so instead, um, this problem, instead of saying ground is G, we're going to say ground is Earth. So it's going to be for E, right? So the air relative to the Earth. Air relative to the Earth is equal to 40 kilometers per hour. And we know that this is going from west to east. So it's going in the east direction. And then what we ultimately want 
is we want to know what the angle will be when this bird should head directly to um, the south. Yeah, so if we want goose relative to earth, we don't know exactly what speed that's going to be, but we do know that the direction is going to be south. Okay, and then for this one, obviously, we, we don't know because we're looking for the angle, right? So what relative angle, we don't know. That was such a weird question mark. Okay. So this is the question mark. And that's there because we don't know what direction it has to fly in to be relative. Um, yeah, so that it can ultimately, the goose relative to the earth can be um, directly southward. Okay, so let's um, let's write down our equation for this problem, right? So we use the chain rule when we have relative motion type questions. So let's write that down. So the goose relative to the earth or the speed of the goose relative to the earth is going to be goose relative to the air plus air relative to the earth. So that's what we have. That's our equation. And I'm gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and like box it in some cute color like purple that we remember. Okay. So now um what are we looking for? Okay, the next thing that we want to do is we want to go back and actually draw this out, right? So when when we draw this out, we know that um let's go ahead and do that in black actually. So I'm going to have a little just Cartesian, tiny Cartesian system just to kind of remind us where we are. And just to make this a little bit more like prominent, let me have, let me do this in blue. Okay. So we know that we want goose to earth, right? So goose to earth, we want it to go southward, right? So opposite of north is south. So I'm pointing it down southward. So goose v earth that's going to be in the south direction okay we also know that the speed of the wind is going to be from east to west and we know that we want it, we're trying to figure out what angle this goose should be flying so really actually i'm going to do a different color just so that we can like um, be able to differentiate between what each one um, means. So let me just have like a different, let me just do different shades of blue. Okay, so this goose is going to be flying at, I don't know what, but 100, I don't know what direction, but 100 kilometers per hour. So that's actually like originally that it's going to be flying at some direction, right? Plus, the speed of this air, right, or the wind, that's going to be 40 kilometers per hour. And that's going to be A, V, E. A, V, or no, sorry, that's the, that's G, V, E. GVA, sorry. So the speed of the goose relative to the air, right? And then the speed of the air relative to the earth. And that'll ultimately give us the speed of the goose relative to the earth, right? Because that's our chain rule, right? So GVA plus AVE, and that's equal to this. So that is consistent with our drawing, right? So what we want to do is we want to figure out what this what this theta is right over here. So how do we do that? Well, we have to figure out what this side is, right? So it's the speed of this side, or we can just use trig. Um, I personally am just gonna find out the speed of this side because why not? And then we can do opposite over adjacent tan, but you know we can use um, whatever we want. We can use the hypotenuse and, um, you know, uh, the opposite as well. We can use, um, you use Sokotoa basically. I personally just love using tan. So I'm going to do that. Um, okay. 
So let's write that down right over here. So A, I want to find out what theta is. So to find theta, first I'm going to find out what GVE is. So we're going to use Pythagorean theorem, right? But in this case, we're going to do 100, 100 squared. Actually, sorry, no, no, no. Let me, let me write this down so that it's more like, um, more step by step. Okay. So we know that this speed, if we're looking for the magnitude by itself, right? So GVA squared is equal to A V E squared plus G V E squared. And I should, it's important to note that the ones above are vectors and this is just magnitude. Okay. So this is just, this is not the same as this. The bottom ones are not the same as the top ones, right? Okay. So now, I mean, yeah, technically they're both the same like magnitude, but the ones, these ones are vectors and this is magnitude. That's really the difference. And that's why the equations look a little bit different. Okay. Um, plus we used our diagram on the right. Okay. So now I want to know what GVE is. So GVE is equal to square root of GVA squared minus AVE squared. And yeah, so I'm just going to plug in the number. So that's going to be 100 squared minus 40 squared, and then square root that. And that's going to be the answer. And I'm getting, I'm just going to put that in the uh, shade of blue that matches um, the vector on the right or the diagram or vector, whatever you want to call it. Well, just the diagram. Okay. And that's going to be 90. 91.65 kilometers per hour or 91.65 we'll get to the we'll add in this later but yeah 91.65 okay and that means that this over here is 91.65 kilometers per hour so now if we want you know theta that's going to be is equal to actually yeah give it more space. Okay. So theta is equal to opposite. So it's going to be tan inverse. Why is the writing so thick? Oh, okay, because I chose a thick pen. Okay, it's going to be tan inverse of opposite 40 over adjacent, which is 91 or 91.65. And the theta that I get is 23.58 degrees. 23.58 degrees is our answer then. Um, but what exactly, oh, sorry. So yeah, this is 21.3 or 58, 58, sorry. Uh, what stamps? Point five eight oh what the heck no no no. oh there's stamps on here too oh my god there's like these hearts that's cute and stars oh and there's a question mark i wonder if i can change the colors maybe i'll use that i don't know okay i didn't like that okay so 21 point five eight okay so like what does that mean 21.58 so it's going to be 21 it's going to be south right because we're going from here to here right if we were going from here if we were, if we were going from here to here then it would be this angle right so yeah because we're not doing that, it's going to be 21. Um, it's going to be 21.58 south, south 21.58 west. So that's our 
or it's 23. Oh my God. I don't know why it says 21. It's 23, 23. Let's correct that over here too. I'm so glad I caught that in time. I absolutely hate recording things twice because yeah. And then editing is just, I don't like to edit my stuff. I just like, this is just me. Everything that I say is on here. Um, sometimes like I'll pause it for a second if I need to sneeze or something, because that's weird to just have my sneeze in there. Um, so, or coughing, whatever. But yeah, the point is I hate recording. So I'm so glad that I caught this um, right now instead of later. Oh my God. Okay. One thing that I hate about this new Zoom update is that it just erases things that I don't want to be erased. Like who, like who said to erase that vector before it was like this, the eraser was this like, it was actually harder to erase stuff because you literally had to touch every single thing um, to erase it, like every single stroke. But now it just erases whatever it wants. And I, I literally, I hate that so much. Okay, there we go. So 23.58, that's what we want. Okay. Yeah, so south 23.58 degrees west. That's your answer for part A. So that's the angle relative to the north-south direction that this bird should travel so that it can um, ultimately, you know, go relatively direct. So ultimately it can go directly southward. Okay. So now part B, how long will it take the goose to cover a ground distance of 500 kilometers from north to south? Okay, great question. So I'm just gonna erase this bottom part. Oh, so now it doesn't want to erase everything. Oh, actually, it has like a shape. So if I want to do lines, I can just do something like that. Okay, perfect. That's that's awesome. Good to know. Okay, so. Now let's do part B and part B says, how long will it take to travel? So we know that the distance that the goose travels is 500 kilometers per hour, um, north to south, so south, right? Okay, so because what's great about this, uh, great about the solution is that we already found out what the speed of the goose is going from north to south, right? So the goose, the goose's speed from going uh, from, yeah, north to south is 91.65 kilometers per hour. And yeah, that's going to be directly south. So all we really need to do is find the time because that's what it's asking. Oh no, I got 10 minutes left. Okay, so now because we have D, V, and T, all we really need to do is use our speed equation, right? So D is equal to V, T, which means that T is equal to distance over speed. So that's gonna be 500 kilometers per hour over 91.65. Oh, sorry, this is not kilometers per hour. This is just kilometers, sorry, typo, typo. Ignore that, okay kilometers per hour. So it's going to be 500 kilometers over 91.65 kilometers per hour. And that gives me the time, which is 5.455 hours. And um, that is five, approximately 5.5 hours. So that's our answer to part B. How long will it take um, for the goose to cover a ground of 500 kilometers per hour from north to south? 5.5 hours. Okay. So that's our solution. Sorry for um, the two typos. Um, I hope everything is fixed. Yeah, everything is fixed now. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for watching. Um, if this was helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, if you have any questions, um, please don't forget to leave them in the comments or you can always email me. I love when you guys leave me comments. So thank you so much for those of you who have been leaving comments. Um, it makes my day. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for watching and see you next time.